Uh, my name is Dan Martinello. I am one of the lender relations specialists uh, here at the SBA's uh, Massachusetts district office. We're out of Boston. And, and uh, like Teresa said, you know, I have a, a jam-packed presentation. So hopefully, you know, you're eating lunch, you've gotten enough coffee. Uh, today, because, uh, you know, I have a lot of information, you know, I'll start it off with some hot topic issues. And then we'll primarily get into uh, the different programs that the SBA has that can help small businesses gain access to capital. And then we'll, we'll uh, tap it off with some just general tips and uh, a Q&A session. Um, so just bear with me one second while I share my screen. And hopefully everybody can see the big blue SBA symbol. Yep, we're there. All right, good, good. <clears throat> All right, like I said, my name's Dan Martinello. I'm one of the lender relations specialists. My primary role here at the SBA is really connecting with our lending partners throughout the state uh, to just make sure that they are up to date on all the you know, programs that we offer that can help you know, uh, they, them with lending opportunities with their small business community, hopefully grow their portfolio and help the small business gain access to capital. And also we do a lot of uh, outside economic development with with different uh, partner organizations such as SCORE and some of our other uh, organizations, the Small Business Development Center, the Center for Women Enterprise, and uh, the Veterans uh, Business Outreach Center, along with Chambers and other uh, small business organizations. Uh, so today's agenda, you know, we're going to talk about some upcoming events here at the SBA. We do a lot, a variety of trainings, whether we're partnering it, uh, partnering with SCORE like we are today, or we're doing trainings ourselves in, in uh, conducting trainings with, with our other sister district offices. Um, and then also we'll talk about some SBA HUD topics and then get into those loan program basics and other SBA programs that are, you know, uh, good to know about. And then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll end it with some general access uh, tips to, uh, you know, access to capital tips. And then uh, we just want to just give you some brief information on federal contracting uh, basics and opportunities and then have a Q&A session at the end too. Okay, so here um, I noticed that there was a question, you know, in the chat. You know, everybody will get a, a copy of today's presentation. So I know, you know, I have a lot of slides. You, you know, this will be a good reference, you know, for anybody to utilize, you know, going forward. But here are a couple of links to uh, some different events that are happening in the SBA over the, over the next uh, week or so. So uh, our office, myself, and a couple of our uh, my colleagues. We started to do an Ask Me Anything uh, small business uh, webinar session once a month, usually the last uh, uh, Wednesday of every month. So for about an hour. So if you want to just sign up for that, we, we, we welcome all small businesses, whether you're a new small business, whether you've been around, you know, in business for years, you're, you're more than welcome to come chat. We, we try to provide some, you know, ongoing updates throughout the year and then, you know, open that session up generally for folks to just ask away uh, and try to dedicate some time, you know, to answer uh, different questions that, that they might have. And then uh, tomorrow we actually have uh, uh, an overview webinar for a program called Thrive. It was, it, it was initially our emerging leaders. And this is, I have a few slides on this uh, upcoming, but, you know, this is a good training program for more experience. Uh, small business is, you know, it provides, you know, small businesses that are at a certain uh, uh, revenue point and a certain point in their, in their, you know, business lifespan that, you know, just kind of get helps get your business to that next level. So it's a good, it's almost like a, a graduate training uh, course that, that takes place uh, over several months during the year. So we are actually our office, our, our district director, Bob Nelson, will be uh, hosting a informational session so folks can learn about that program and that opportunity. And if, you know, if, if it's, it's something that they may uh, feel will benefit their small business, you can have an opportunity to actually sign up for the program. 
but that's uh, happening tomorrow at noon. All right, so, so just some general hot topics. I know a lot of folks on this call probably familiar with the variety of uh, uh, COVID, um, COVID uh, SBA small business relief programs that we've had over the last few years. Uh, the one program that was still ongoing for the last few years was the Economic Injury Disaster Loan. Uh, we just heard, uh, we just got word within the last few days that the funds have been fully exhausted from that program. So, you know, um, this program started back in March of uh, 2020, and it went on and, you know, I had different funds appropriated to it over the course of the last few years, uh, but now those funds are fully exhausted. There are some folks that are still, still in the process of getting funded. Their loan was approved and funds were obligated uh, for that particular loan. But if you are a, um, a small business that was looking to submit an increase uh, request, or maybe you recently got declined and you were looking to submit a reconsideration uh, request, uh, the, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Portal to submit those requests actually closed Monday evening. So no one's going to be able to submit those going forward. However, here in Massachusetts, uh, small businesses within this, just this particular program in general, <clears throat> had received over $7.2 billion. So that's, uh, you know, that includes the, the actual loan portion of this program, along with the different uh, advanced portions, which is more of the grant portion of the actual program. So in total, uh, more, more than 7.2 billion. And that was as of about a week and a half ago. So it's probably, you know, closer to 7.4 when, when it's all said and done. Um, so here's just some updates regarding the the funding lapse. So as of May 6th, SBA is no longer going to be processing the COVID uh, idle loan increase request or request for reconsideration on previously declined loan applications. Um, for If you had an, uh, an application that was considered obligated, which means you've already gotten approved, you probably already signed the closing docs or uh, the the uh, loan officer that was working on your file is probably in the process of sending you those closing docs, your loan is still going to get uh, funded. Um, myself and some of my colleagues actually sent an email late last week to folks that were on our list of Massachusetts small businesses that were listed as um, obligated uh, applicants. So you, um, you probably already are aware of the next steps uh, that you need to take. Um, and just as a reminder, the portal, the idle portal closed uh, for everybody on May, um, May 16th, so on Monday night. Um, but with that said, you may still need to retrieve some previous documents. If, you, if you've gone through the process uh, before, you've gone through the whole approval process, maybe you want to um, get a copy of your uh, loan note or your other closing document and you forgot to do so before the 16th, doesn't mean you won't be able to get a chance to get a copy of those. You just want to make sure you call uh, the Disaster Customer Service Center and they should be able to mail you out uh, copies of any documents that you want to uh, make copies of uh, on that system. And then also very important uh, for folks, you know, you, most of you know, if you if you receive this application, you, you've looked over the loan note, this is a long term loan program, it's up to 30 years. So with that said, you want to make sure that you're keeping track of, of that loan. Um, and one way you can do that is you can actually sign up for what's called a CAVS account. So we have a system called the Capital Access Financial System. Our lending partners are very familiar with this system because that is the system that our lending partners utilize to submit uh, SBA loan deals and also service uh, their SBA uh, loan portfolio. Uh, with that said, it, small businesses can also have their own access uh, within that same system. So I provided a link to the instructions on how to enroll there, and it, and you'll be able to see uh, the idle loan that you have on file. You'll be able to track what you know interest has accrued, you know what the payment, you know what your upcoming payments are going to be, and it also has a link to uh, pay.gov, which is going to be the electronic format uh, for for uh, how you should be paying your your idle loan. And from from what I'm hearing, it looks like for the most part, everything is going to be done electronically when it comes to payments for this program. I, I, we're not anticipating that it's, uh, there's going to be any sort of uh, mail-in option to send in a check or anything like that. Um, a couple other pieces of information when it comes to the, the uh, COVID idle program. 
over the course of time, over the last few years, they've made some changes uh, uh, to this program. Mo uh, the majority of these changes are, are of benefit to the small business. So one of the things that recently changed was uh, they, they extended the deferment period uh, for all idle applicants, all idle uh, loan recipients uh, just a few months ago. So now everybody is on a 30 month uh, deferment from the date of their note. Uh, so which that means if you got your um, your uh, idle loan maybe in April of 2020, which was probably you know you know you're probably one of the first uh, set of small businesses to receive that funding, your next payment realistically isn't going to be due till the fall. Um, with that said, you want to keep in mind interest does accrue during the the, the deferment period, um, and you can also make payments during your deferment period. You don't have to wait the 30 months. It's just there uh, as an option for you as a small business to try to help you out. And because the SBA and the federal government still realizes, uh, you know, a lot of small businesses are still trying to get back, uh, you know, to normal operations, um, you know, with this pandemic and, you know, as things linger, um, you, you know, they, they want to try to, you know, help small businesses out as much as they possibly can. Um, and like I said, you know, if you're making partial payments or full payments, you want to do that through uh, pay.gov. That's the government system that a variety of, of uh, federal government agencies utilize for uh, a different payments. So, you know, it's not just an SBA um, uh, portal where you make SBA loan payments. It's, it's um, like I said, a, a variety of different agencies use that same exact portal. Um, and then just keep in mind, during your deferment period, they're not gonna be sending out any notifications of how much you owe. So that's another reason why it's very important to sign up for that CAVS account so you can keep track of that. Uh, and what we've been told recently is that um, once, you um, once your billing period actually starts after your deferment is, is over, you're gonna be getting an email um, letting you know that your payment is due. They're not gonna be sending out uh, paper statements to everybody. Daniel, what yep. can a non pop what can a nonprofit do to see that information because they're not allowed to use the CAFS uh, portal? Uh, they they should be able to utilize the CAFS portal. I, I am, you know, for that I'll I'll have to look into that because they it, it really go it's going to ask um, it when you're signing up it usually asks for the tax id of the entity and then it usually will ask for the social of whoever the uh, signer or, or was for that particular entity and it should allow you to have that uh calves account um if they're having problems i'll put my email in the chat and have and they can follow up with me directly and we'll try to troubleshoot that and contact the disaster center and make sure we can get them all right, I'll Add put it together that. an introductory email so she can reach out to you. Okay, okay. thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so um, a couple other things when it comes to the, the idle uh, portal, which closed on Monday night. Um, like I was saying earlier, you know, most folks at this point, if they had an, uh, an open reconsideration request because their application got denied or they were waiting on a response for their increase request, unless you were in an obligated uh, status, um, it's not going to be moved forward anymore. So there wasn't uh, funds appropriated for your uh, application. Um, with that said, there are going to be some folks that are in that obligated uh, phase that maybe didn't get to sign their closing documents electronically uh, before the portal close. So don't, you know, don't worry too much about that. Um, the SBA is um, coming together with their loan officers right now to contact all of those folks um, by phone and by email to verify uh, their mailing address because what they're going to do is send out your closing documents uh, via the mail. And then you'll have to send those back to the SBA. So with that said, just keep in mind, the process to get, get funded at this point will probably take uh, anywhere from three weeks uh, to a month because of the back and forth, sending it to you in the mail, you getting it back to the SBA, the SBA reviewing to make sure all the loan documents were signed correctly, and then uh, sending it over to the funding team. But you sh we uh, have been told that all of the folks that are getting funded should be getting an email and a phone call uh, to verify their address within the next week or so. And then here is just some other uh, information about different programs that we have that are changing or expanding, uh, hopefully for the better, 
uh, here at the, the SBA. So the SBA has a program called the Community Advantage Program. And uh, with, with this, this was typically a, a pilot that's been run for the last uh, few years. So the SBA is actually go going to extend uh, this program out. And with that extension, they're gonna be looking to uh, get a variety of new lenders into this program. What the community advantage uh, specifically, it falls under one of our main uh, uh, lending programs, the 7A program. Uh, with that said, uh, uh, lenders can utilize this to help small businesses gain access to capital. So it gives them a, it gives a lender a certain guarantee depending on uh, the loan size and, and the program that they're using. So with that said, the SBA is looking to uh, get more mission-based lenders. So mission-based lenders are, you know, uh, typical folks that may help uh, small businesses that are, are, are either new businesses, maybe they might be minority-owned uh, small businesses, women-owned small businesses, um, uh, businesses uh, that uh, are for uh, owned by uh, disabled veterans, you know, just to name a few. Um, so that that's really, you know, they're really trying to, you know, target the disadvantaged small business community and try to help them gain additional access to capital. And with, with that said, they are looking <clears throat> to increase some of the program levels. So initially it was at 250,000, the maximum uh, loan dollar that could be provided through a, a community advantage lender. Now it's going up to uh, 350,000. <clears> and then they are looking to remove some restrictions when it comes to individuals with particular criminal backgrounds and you know, they, uh, the trouble that they might run into accessing capital if they're trying to start a small business. Um, and then also there's gonna be some uh, collateral uh, requirement changes to the program. And then uh, just you know, some, some also ad additional introductions on opening up uh, the use of proceeds. So un under this program right now, there was no element to allow a lender that that is a community advantage lender, uh, it there was no element to allow them to provide a revolving line of credit to a small business. So, the new changes that are going to be coming into place over the next, I think, uh, thirty days or so, uh, there we're going to see that uh, a revolving line of credit is now going to be available through this particular uh, programs. And then there's going to be also other. Um, modifications to the terms and things like that. But we haven't gotten the full um, guidance on that. We're anticipating that within the next uh, 30, uh, 30 to 60 days. And then uh, we'll, we'll be reaching out to our current community advantage lenders here in the state of Massachusetts, which we have about uh, three or four of uh, currently. But um, we are, each district office throughout the nation is in the process of trying to get more lenders on board with this program. <clears throat> And then additionally, uh, wanna make sure that for, for if you're a woman owned small, small business, um, there's different platforms, uh, uh, learning tools available to you through the SBA. So the SBA actually has this uh, uh, full online digital learning platform called Ascent. You know, and this is really, it, it's to help women owned small businesses, but really it, you know, anybody can, can technically utilize this uh, online platform. It, it's free to all small businesses, but it provides you just a, a, a variety of different tools <clears throat> that can help you in any stage of your business. So whether you're just starting out or you've been in business for a while, it allows you to gain access to different training modules, you know, different uh, uh, video tutorials, uh, also access to just a, a variety of different technical assistant tools that you might be able to help. And you can also network with other like-minded small businesses uh, through this platform as well, you know, so they, they talk about, you know, not only just general access to capital, but all other technical assistance that's related to running a small business. So that could be, you know, your HR topics or, or, you know, uh, help with, you know, getting the right inventory, all of that, all of those types of uh, tools and, and, and training modules can be found on this Ascent uh, platform. And so you can find this uh, on sba.gov directly. And uh, just going back to that Thrive uh, uh, program, so it's what was previously in place was our Emerging Leaders uh, uh, course. They they changed the name, so it stands Thrive stands for Train, Hope, Rise, Innovate, Venture, uh, Elevate. So it's an executive level training um, uh, course. So think of this as a as a 
graduate training course for for small businesses. So not not everybody's going to be able to apply for this. This is for more experienced uh, small businesses that have been in business a while. It's not a training program for for new small businesses or or entrepreneurs just starting out. Um, <clears throat> So, you know, with that said, um, you know, basically it's going to provide complementary entrepreneurship education and training for executives of high performing uh, small businesses. So it's a, a, over six months, it's going to be an intensive executive entrepreneurship training series that includes both in-person coaching, self-paced instruction, mentoring, and classroom time. So the program allows for participants to work with a network of experienced subject matter experts in core business topics uh, like accounting, business strategy, marketing, and human resources is customized for the unique needs of a small business owner. So like I said, tomorrow um, at, at noon, we're going to have an overview of what the program uh, is like. So if you are interested in that, please feel free to join us for that. I think there is another uh, training session um, provided by our sister office over in Maine, I think later that afternoon. And anybody that can't make the noon, send me an email and I'll get you the link for the uh, Maine district office uh, overview training on that. And here's, I, I won't go over it, but this is uh, just the, the highlights of, you know, if you can qualify to participate in this program. So that's just, you know, food for thought and something for you to know about, but we'll go over that in detail um, uh, with our, uh, my colleagues at the office tomorrow. All right, so let's get into the access to capital. So, you know, a lot of folks, it, it comes up, you know, with conversations, whether we're at, you know, chamber network work and events or whether we're just, you know, in the office taking phone calls from, from small businesses, you know, uh, a lot of folks, you know, can get a little bit confused when it comes to the process of SBA loan programs and who provides those SBA loans and how the, the entire process works. So we get asked a lot of times, you know, hey, you know, I get a phone call from a small business, Dan, I, you know, I'd like to get an SBA loan. Can you help me help me do that? And for the most part, the majority of our loan programs, we're not the direct lender. So we utilize partnerships. So we have partnerships with a variety of lenders throughout the state here in Massachusetts. And then in general, we have uh, a, a variety of lending partners throughout the United States. Um, with that said, our programs are you help the lending partners help you as a small business potentially gain access to capital. So our lending partners can utilize our programs depending on if typically if maybe they can't fit um, uh, your loan deal within their own uh, on their own small business conventional terms, um, but they still want to maybe do, you know, help you with that deal. They'll look to utilize one of our loan programs to see if they can fit that, you know, work that deal in and provide you the capital that you need. So we're not, you know, the ones making that decision. It's for the most part, it's the lender making that determination. So that's really, you know, some of what I'm going to talk about today is really, you know, important is making sure that you really establish a good relationship with your lender and letting them know what your needs are, you know, and, and so they can really identify on how they can, you know, help you, whether they can help you with your capital needs on their with their own uh, loan programs, or if they may utilize, uh, may need to utilize an SBA loan program. So, you know, first off, you know, you're always going to, there's going to become a time where you may need capital, you know, you might need a loan for that capital, um, you know, the, the bank's going to provide, you know, that capital, and then the SBA is going to, um, if the SBA is needed, uh, we're going to, a, a lender can utilize a particular program to mitigate some of the loss, um, because there's a guarantee that backs uh, a particular uh, loan. Usually that guarantee is going to be a certain percentage based on the program used and, or and the size of the loan. So who are some of our lending partners? Well, we have a variety of lending partners, as you can see here. So we have conventional lenders so you're every day just like you know uh, East Cambridge Savings Bank here you know on the line um, you know we have credit unions uh, you know you know the credit the local credit unions you would see in you know every local town here in Massachusetts um, you also have your your non-bank lenders so you know you, you might have lenders that <clears throat> uh, um, are, are just you know strictly you know online fintech lenders or, or they're you know community uh, type based lenders where they don't really have a 
a uh, deposit um, uh, banking uh, component to it. And then we also have your mission-based uh, community lenders. So we have certified development companies. Uh, they, they typically will help us with our uh, one of our our core uh, loan programs, which is called a 504 program, which we'll talk about shortly. Um, and then we also have those community advantage lenders that we talked about uh, briefly before. And then we have uh, micro lenders, which are another alternative mission-based uh, lender that helps with uh, another core program we have, which is our micro loan uh, program. So which uh, we'll talk about shortly as well. And here's, here's just a general rundown of some of the loan programs we have, and then just other uh, avenues that you can take to look into to gain access to different capital needs. So, you know, we do have uh, three core loan programs. This is outside of, you know, uh, d disaster loans. So our 7A program, our 504 program, and our micro loan programs. And then also uh, the, we have a variety of uh, small business investment companies that are certified with the SBA that may be able to provide uh, pot potential, you know, investment, you know, opportunities through, and they can provide in investment through debt or equity or a combination of both. So all of that, all of these uh, components you can find directly on sba.gov. And then also too, we have uh, research and development award funding. Uh, so we work with a variety of federal agencies. So the SBA is more of the uh, facilitator of, of this program. We're not the ones providing the direct uh, grants uh, through these programs. It's a, it's a variety of other agencies, but <clears throat> through the uh, Small Business Innovation Research and the Small Business uh, uh, Technology Transfer uh, programs, you, you know, there may be opportunities for you as a small business to receive grant funding to, uh, for, for, for different uh, um, industries, depending on what you're in. So if you're in the artificial intelligence uh, uh, industry or maybe clean energy or educational technology, there are some other uh, industry areas too. You wanna look on sba.gov and look up uh, these different grant opportunities to help uh, research and development different uh, components that you may have that can help either the federal government or maybe help the nation. <clears throat> Then uh, lastly, we also have our surety bond program. So the SBA, similar to our, our SBA uh, back loans, our guarantee program with 7A and the 504 program, we, we also guarantee uh, loans through the uh, surety, uh, we guarantee bonds through the surety bond program. Uh, so we partner with a variety of different uh, uh, surety bond uh, uh, third parties that will provide uh, surety bonds for folks that may be uh, working the constru construction industry and may need uh, bonding to bid on on a different job or, or work. Now, this is going to be an important program going forward because, uh, as most folks probably know, the Biden administration signed that uh, the part of the infrastructure bill back in, I think it was June 2021 now, that uh, really entailed a, a lot of different small business contract opportunities that will eventually trickle down all the way down to the local level. So this, you know, if you're in, you know, uh, general contracting, construction, you know, uh, um, electrical work, things like that, you may see these, these different um, job opportunities come your way. Um, and with that, you might um, need bonding, especially if you're dealing with government contract and a lot of times bonding is required. So we do do training sessions on that. Uh, every so often, and we can always get you in contact with our surety bond team if you have any questions about that. <clears throat> and then uh, just, you know, as far as our loan programs go in general, you know, here uh, is a rundown of some of the benefits to the borrowers. I mean, this isn't all the benefits, but just a few highlights. So, you know, generally with our loan programs uh, that are utilized through our lending partners, um, you're, you're always going to find that there these loans are going to be on reasonable loan terms. Um, you know, and, and this is going to help folks that may not have been able to qualify um, on conventional um, loan terms through, through whatever lender that they're working with. Also, too, you'll see that uh, generally there's smaller equity requirements, which, you know, usually will mean lower down payment. So you can conserve some of your cash that you have on hand. Um, and then there's also opportunities for longer repayment terms, which can mean monthly lower payments and, again, increase uh, your cash flow. So, and then additionally, 
you know, with the SBA, you know, we want to help the applicant, we want to help the small business owners, but we also want to make sure that these loans are helping your community, right? So, you know, it's very important to help see small businesses grow. Small businesses are the backbone, you know, of, of our nation. And, you know, the more they grow, the more our, our communities nationwide grow. So, you know, additionally, when we're funding, you know, helping fund these uh, small businesses, you know, we're promoting economic growth, you know, it's helping uh, generate tax revenue for the community. It's obviously a, a great way to help create jobs throughout your, your different communities. And then it encourages uh, innovation as well. <clears throat> and then here are some highlights of the, of the three main uh, flagship programs that we have. So when it comes to the 7A loan program, um, typically you're gonna see that funds can be within this program there's a variety of different uh, uses, and it's very typical to what you would you would normally use. So we talk to our lending partners all the time. There's very few things that you can't utilize our programs for. Um, you know, so if a small business is looking for uh, a loan for inventory needs, or uh, needing to expand their business, or leasehold improvements, or they need a, a, some working general working capital, or uh, real estate to help their business grow. You know, all of those are, are usually acceptable uh, uses of proceeds under the 7A program, and the loans uh, can be uh, fed, are federally guaranteed loans, and the the loan program program goes up to five million dollars and then as I talked about before it, we have very competitive uh, loan terms and then flexible uh, loan terms or also we have programs that offer revolving lines of credit um, <clears throat> with the 7a program there's a variety of different sub programs that fall under this uh, core program with that said it's very important to make sure that your lender understands your real needs of your business. So if your lender is asking you a lot of questions about your capital needs and about your business, it's not to be nosy. It's never to be nosy. They want to be able to assess what the best program is that they can try to help you gain the access uh, to capital or you know gain access to capital that you actually need and also put you into a program that really benefits, you know, your business the best. So, you know, they 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 are going to ask a lot of questions, anticipate a lot of questions, and anticipate that you need to have those answers uh, for them. Because you know, with our 7A program, if a lending if a lending partner is going to utilize that, they want to make sure that they are again they're fitting you under what best serves you and them. So you know, there are going to be um, some eligibility requirements when it comes to uh, the 7A program, as folks might be might have seen you know, some eligibility requirements if you um, went through the process of the Paycheck Protection Program, which was one of the, uh, the COVID uh, responses for access to capital. Um, also the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program had some eligibility requirements. So you may be familiar with some of these. When it comes to the 7A program, it, um, or when it come, came to those COVID programs, they were a little bit more open to allowing uh, lending dollars to go out to businesses that typically may not be eligible under our core programs. But here is just a basic rundown. So, you know, what you need to know as a small business uh, to make you eligible for any type of SBA loan. So uh, for one, you need to uh, operate for a profit. So typically with 7A loans, uh, we do not lend to nonprofit uh, businesses. That was a little bit different when it came to some of these uh, COVID programs that were available the last few years. Um, also, too, you need to be considered a small business as defined by the SBA. So that's something that your lender will will make sure that um, that you fit under that small business criteria. And realistically, we don't run into a problem too much with this because uh, you know well over ninety percent of businesses nationwide uh, are considered small businesses. And then also. Um, you have to be engaged in or uh, proposed to do business in the United States or, you know, its territory. So, you know, we are the federal government where where um, we want to make sure that U.S. based businesses are, are growing. And that's what our main concern is. And then, uh, you know, have reasonable e uh, invested equity, want to see some skin in the game. Uh, then um, there's also 
uh, use of alternative uh, financial resources, including personal assets before seeking financial assistance. So that, again, that's something that your lender is going to try to assess uh, when they're determining if they need to utilize a, a uh, SBA loan program. Uh, also, you, you may um, need to be able to demonstrate a need for that loan. Again, this is something that it's important for you to make sure that you're lender understands everything about your business, and then you uh, use the funds for sound business purposes. Like I said, there's a variety of small business uh, purposes, but we do have uh, some things that you cannot uh, utilize uh, for, you know, that list is, you, you know, you know, not that long, but there are a couple of different purposes out there that you can't um, utilize it for. One, one being, you know, that might come off, off the top of my head would be if you were, utilize, if you just wanted to buy a commercial uh, piece of property with the sole purpose of just renting it out and you're not really utilizing it for your own business operations at all. Typically SBA programs are not to be utilized for that type of uh, um, purpose. And then also too, you gotta be uh, uh, concerned with any sort of delinquency of uh, existing uh, debt obligations to the, to the US government. So any sort of uh, federal debt you know, if you're if you're late on that, uh, or if you have some some uh, previous delinquent debt, you want to make sure that you shore those up and try to get that fixed uh, uh, prior, because that would come up and and cause eligibility issues um, if you are looking for access to capital and an SBA programs used. And here is just a, a basic breakdown. So a couple of things, and I, I have uh, some more information on this uh, later in the presentation, but. There's going to be some fees anytime you're you're dealing with a small business loan um, or really any loan in general. You know, even when you're looking for for a home loan, right? You're, you're getting a mortgage. There's always going to be some some sort of fees, closing costs, whatever the case may be. So when it comes to the the SBA loan programs, we have what's called a guarantee fee. So the guarantee fee is a charge that is assessed based on the size of the loan and the amount of the loan being guaranteed. Um, with that said, <clears throat> those fees may be different from year to year. Doesn't mean that um, you're getting charged on a yearly basis. It's just depending on when your loan got approved, um, you might your fee might be different if you got approved this year versus if you get approved for a loan next year for, for the same amount. So you want to just keep that in mind that the fee schedule does change on a yearly basis. But the guarantee fee is generally a one-time fee and it, it will occur during the approval process of your, of your loan. Um, here is just a, a outline of this fiscal year's guarantee fee schedule. So as you can see, for small dollar loans, $350,000 or less, there is going to be no uh, guarantee fee uh, for the borrower. So that means if, a, if you're working with a lender um, and they decide to provide you a loan and your loan only happens to be, say, $100,000, um, the, the SBA is not going to be assessing any sort of guarantee fee for that particular loan this year. So our fiscal years run from October 1st to September 30th of every year. We don't do a January to the end of December um, uh, fiscal year cycle. Uh, with that said, too, um, you know, if you are a veteran-owned small business um, and a, you're working with a lender and they, uh, the lender um, is doing a loan under the SBA Express program, um, you are not going to see a, a guarantee fee going forward. So that, that was a permanent change that was made to our Express program. Our SBA Express program is our most uh, heavily utilized program, reason being it's, it's the it's one of the programs that allows a lender to utilize uh, or provide a small business, a revolving line of credit. So that's why it's uh, very popular. So, but if you are an owner of a, of a, a veteran owned small business, uh, which you have to be 51% or more, and this also includes the spouse of a veteran, you're not gonna see a guarantee fee at all for the um, express loans. And those express loans go up to 500,000. But as you can see here, uh, there's a different different percentage range based on the higher uh, uh, up the ladder you go as far as the loan amount. And then just on to our 504 loan program. So our 504 program generally um, is utilized is utilized for you know folks that need to buy or construct or expand commercial real estate or purchase 
you know, heavy pieces of equipment or machinery. So, um, you know, with, with that said, uh, this is more of a, uh, a, a three-party approach versus the traditional two-party approach when it comes to uh, access to capital. And what I mean by that is, you know, on a normal loan, you probably, it's you as the applicant, and then you're dealing with whatever lender that you're working with on that loan. So the two parties right there. So in this, um, in this program, it's going to be three parties. So you're going to have you as the applicant, you're going to have the uh, CDC uh, that we talked about as one of our lending partners earlier. And then you're also going to, that's going to provide um, part of the capital uh, needs. And then you're going to have a third party lender to provide uh, 50%. Uh, typically of the capital needs. So you see this little chart here as an example. Um, you know, with that said, um, that third party lender is typically going to be like a, a traditional bank for the most part, you know, that, so, you, you know, your everyday, you know, community banks and banks you see within your, 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 your downtowns, those are the folks that are going to be working with the CDC and you uh, to get these uh, deals done. Um, so, you know, with that, you know, this program, you know, does allow for competitive, you know, fixed rate mortgage financing packages, and it allows uh, uh, folks to go up to uh, the lending partners to go up to like 25 years, you know, on commercial real estate. So it can, you know, reduce some of the, uh, reduce your overall, you know, monthly, you um, you know, um, loan bill. And then also too, for the most part, you can bring as little as 10% equity injection uh, to the table. Uh, there are going to be instances where you may have to bring more, uh, typically, maybe if you're dealing with a special use property, I think maybe like a gas station, you know, something like a property that uh, maybe you're buying uh, that isn't easily convertible into something else. Uh, because of environmental concerns or whatnot, you may have to bring additional equities, say an additional five uh, percent. But for for the most part, uh, on uh, no, the majority of the deals, the borrower only has to bring in uh, ten percent uh, equity injection into the project. And here's just a rundown of you know some basic eligibility uh, requirements for that. So again, operating for a profit, you know, very you know very similar to our 7A program, you know, a lot of the same eligibility requirements, um, you know, having tangible net worth of less than 15 million, having an average net income of less than uh, 5 million after federal income taxes for the two years preceding your application. Uh, there's going to be other, you know, general eligibility standards and, you know, include, you know, falling in within the SBA size guidelines that we just talked about with the 7A. It's going to be the same size guidelines, you know, ha having qualified uh, management experience. So those are the types of things you want to make sure your lender, your, uh, the, the lenders that you're working with know about that. And then also having a feasible business plan, you know, um, your business is of good character and the, the, Owners of the businesses of our good character, and the and then that you can show the, that you have the ability to repay the loan. So that's one big thing when it comes to, to SBA loans in general. Um, we want to we want to see that the small business can repay uh, the loan. So where you know our programs are really you know based on the cash flow of the business, and then you know loans cannot be made to businesses engaged in nonprofit or passive businesses or speculative. Uh, activities. So, you know, there are going to be other things that may come up with eligibility, but these are some of the basic requirements. And then going on to the microloan program. Uh, so this is uh, our, um, a more of a mission-based uh, program. So we work with a variety of different uh, 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 lenders and, and nonprofit lenders throughout the uh, state of Massachusetts. Um, and what they are tasked with doing is trying to, again, similar to our community advantage program uh, and our community advantage lenders, they're tasked with trying to help small businesses uh, such as startups, minority small owned small businesses, uh, um, any sort of disadvantaged uh, owned small business, women owned small business, uh, disabled veteran owned, you know, um, you know, and there's, there's several others as well. Uh, but these loans go up to fifty thousand uh, dollars. Interest rates are negotiated by the lender, so each lender has their their own, you know, interest rates on that. But again, they're all they're all reasonable. Um, and then um, the funds uh, for a micro loan can be utilized 
uh, for businesses for working capital, the purchase of furniture, fixtures, supplies, materials, and equipment, uh, to name a few. And then the maximum term of, of a microloan is six years. So in this program, they don't have a revolving uh, line of credit feature. So everything is a term loan uh, within this particular uh, program. And then additionally, we also, you know, help provide, the SBA does help provide uh, folks that are looking to grow their business outside of the United States. So, you know, through exporting, um, you know, so there are different opportunities um, where you can get assistance, you know, get counseling and training through our export assistance centers and our small business development centers. Also, there's a, a grant program called the State Trade Expansion Program. So each year, usually late summer, early fall, uh, funding is provided uh, to the export center here in, in the, the Massachusetts Export Center from the SBA to provide uh, grants to small businesses that are trying to uh, grow their business internationally. So you can utilize that grant fund for, you know, converting uh, um, advertisement material over to certain languages, uh, attending trade shows, things like that. Um, so, you know, if you want more information on that particular grant program, uh, go to your uh, the Massachusetts Export Center, or you can go through the uh, SBDC, they have the link for there as well. And then also too, if you're working with a lender on a different deal, uh, on, on a certain loan deal that might, and you might be utilizing funds for exporting purposes, the SBA actually has specific programs under the 7A that are utilized for export related purposes. So again, this is why it's very important to make sure that your lender understands what your real needs are. Um, so don't, you know, so that they can put you into a program that best fits your needs. And then uh, just want to also let folks know, you know, when, when it comes to connecting with lenders, it's not always the easiest uh, process, you know, but with that said, the SBA does have a tool on sba.gov called Lender Match. So think of this as I know most folks probably see the commercials, you know, your match.com, right? The dating websites. Think of this very similar fashion. We're trying to help you get connected with lenders throughout the state and, and other lenders that might uh, um lend to small businesses on a national level. Um, so with that said, you can actually create a profile through this lender match feature. You can talk about uh, some of your credit needs. You can talk about your business and, and you, know, you know, kind of provide some details about your business there. And then once you submit that profile, that gets sent out to all of our, our lending partners that have access to lender match, which is the majority of our lending partners are signed up for this. Um, and within two days, um, those lending partners are able to look over your profile and then they'll decide whether they would like to have a further conversation with you. And if they want to have a further conversation with you, um, you'll end up getting an automated email from the SBA saying, hey, X, Y, and Z bank would like to speak with you. Here's their contact information. What's good about it is you're getting the contact information of the loan officer who actually reviewed your, your profile. And a, a lot of the times these folks, these are the folks that you really want to talk to because they're, you know, they're the folks that are on the small business lending teams at their institutions. They're probably also the folks that have uh, experience with SBA lending as well. Um, and, and then you can kind of take it from there and try to set up meetings with them. This is not a as, as of this moment, it's not a uh, application process. It's not a um, format where as if you submit this, you automatically have to, uh, a lender has to give you an SBA loan and things like that. This is just a connection tool at this point. The SBA is currently working on potentially making this, uh, transitioning this into an application process, um, but we'll be seeing that probably within the next year or so. Um, and there'll be additional features added on to that. And then here's a list of some of our micro lenders. So if you are uh, looking for uh, small dollar loans, um, you, you know you can click on each of these links and find out you know um, it, it, you know who the uh, teams are here at these micro lending um, institutions. Uh, with that, uh, one thing to note: 
not all these folks lend throughout the entire state. So some of them only lend within the city that they're in or, or within a certain radius uh, of where their, their um, office is. So just keep that in mind. There's only a few of them actually uh, are able to lend based on their, how their organization is run um, throughout the entire state. <clears throat> And then just some information when it comes to the SBA uh, surety bond guarantee, because like I said, this is going to be very important, especially for folks in, in, you know, in the construction side of the house where, where there's going to be opportunities coming down the, the pipeline in the next year or so. Um, you you want to make sure that you look into the SBA um, um, surety bond program because, you know, there's going to be a variety of different bond bondings that are third party um uh, um, bonding companies can help with whether it's a bid bond performance payment or maintenance and um, you know for you, you want to make sure that typically if you're doing business with the government too you you may uh, bonding is typically required for certain projects um, a lot of times you'll see that at the state and local level too and Again, you know, this program can help small businesses, you know, facing a variety of different barriers to success um, and, and create success by, you know, creating that access and opportunity for them to qualify for the contract bonding, increase their bonding capacity and also, you know, grow their business. So if you need to find a, a surety agent within the state of Massachusetts, just go to this link uh, below at sba.gov and you can see that if you just put in uh, the state of Massachusetts, I think there's about 30 or 40 different bonding agents uh, that work on, on this program here in the state. All right, so here are just some general tips uh, for access uh, to capital. So this is not a be all end all list, but this is just kind of some general you know, requirements that are, and, and things that I wanted folks to make sure that they think about um, when it comes to access to capital. So, you know, for one, making your, your business case, right? You you want to you'll you'll need to make a solid business case, you know, for for more funding. Um, really, no matter what stage of uh, of your business you're in, um, you know, produce you know a short term statement with the total requested amount and specific reasons for it. You know, um, a, a business case should. Uh, give assurances that the new funds won't be, you know, mismanaged, include descriptions of your management team to highlight their skills and expertise. Like I said, you know, these are things that your lender that you're working with want to know, because eventually whoever's helping you with that, they, they are going to assess first, you know, if they can, you know, help you based on, you know, their own conventional terms, you know, if they'll be able to help you on with, through an SBA loan program. Um, and then they're going to have to get an approval through upper management. So, you know, the more detail you provide them, um, specific detail you provide them, the better. Uh, making sure that you prepare financial statements. So displaying that uh, your business is doing well with financial history statements. Yeah, um, you you want to show that how your business has grown by reporting revenue, expenses, and profit profit over time. Uh, if you don't have a history of positive growth, you want to make sure that you explain why uh, more funding will allow you to turn it around. Uh, also, uh, prove financially, uh, you want to prove you're financially responsible with a business credit report. So um, if you've already applied for a DUNS number, uh, um, you want to make sure that you can get a business credit report from the Dun & Bradstreet. Uh, review your business credit file to make sure, you know, it's accurate before sharing it. Uh, so those, you know, some, some of those tips, and then also cho choosing your funding source, you know, it's, there's a variety of different ways to get funding. You know, I know we, we talk a lot about our lending partners and, and, and banks, but there are other ways, um, you know, not in, you know, that this, this isn't a one size fits all for every small business, right? So every small business is going to, you know, need to find funding from a variety of different sources. And you should, and as a small business, should, should look into everything and figure out what best fits your small business. So whether it's getting, you know, gen, uh, a general uh, small business loan, uh, getting, you know, credit through, you know, you know credit card institutions or other, uh, um, you, you know, alternative uh, financial institutions or looking at crowdfunding as an option. Um, also looking at investors and, and uh, selling ownership in your company is an opportunity there. And then again, utilizing, making sure, you know, you try to connect with uh, lenders uh, for more conventional type of small business lending. And you can utilize that, that lender match tool that we just talked about to try to connect with the lenders in that service your business area. 
<clears throat> so also too, another big thing, you know, it's, it's hard running a small business, right? And it's hard doing a lot of these things on, on your own. Um, but here in the state of Massachusetts, you know, you, you really have a lot of small business resources out there. You know, there's a lot of folks um, and, and organizations willing and able to help you with a variety of different small business assistance. <clears throat> so with that said, you know, seek the help and guidance from uh, the resource partners that the SBA, you know, partners with. So whether that's, you know, SCORE with us today, the SBDC, uh, C, you know, the Center for Women Enterprise, CWE, or the Veterans Business Outreach Center, you know, make sure that you're connecting with these folks to try to, uh, you know, get the assistance that you need. And then here's just a, a just a general rundown because you know this is always comes up a lot in in discussions with small businesses and making sure that you are aware that there's always going to be probably some sort of fee uh, or fee or fees entailed with a small business loan deal similar to you know if you've been or if you're familiar with you know if you bought bought a home over the last several years you know there's always going to be those closing costs or, or fees at the beginning of the process, you know, so here's just kind of a, a basic breakdown of some general, you know, fees that you should be aware of. And you want to make sure that, you know, you have some, some, uh, you know, cash on hand to make sure that you can cover these fees because not everything can be rolled into the loan. Some of these things can, and some of these things are, um, cannot, but, um, for one thing, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you may need you may need to provide some sort of equity injection. So lenders in the SBA they want to see that you have some some skin in the game. So there's you know usually there might be some requirements for you to put down a, a down payment or an equity injection into your loan project. So it really just you know it will vary. It just depends on what it is that your your need is. So um, but you, you're always going to probably have to provide some sort of equity injection or down payment. Then also too, like we talked about before, there's that SBA uh, guarantee fee. Um, so this is going to apply only on SBA loan. So if you're working with a lender and and you're uh, and they're not going to utilize an SBA program, this isn't something that you would have to be concerned with. But um, <clears throat> the amounts on that SBA guarantee fee, if it goes as an SBA loan program, they're going to vary based on the fiscal year fee schedule and the loan amount and the program used, like we talked about earlier. And then depending on your situation, if you're dealing with, say, real estate or maybe you're, you're uh, looking to buy a, a big piece of equipment or a vehicle, there might be some sort of an appraisal fee. You know, that's very common in, in those types of deals. Uh, business valuation fees uh, might come up, especially if uh, there's a change of ownership involved. So if you're buying out uh, another small business, <clears throat> uh, typically, you know, for the SBA, they want to see a, a business valuation. So uh, that you, you, that may require an, an additional fee that you'll, you'll have to pay. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> and then uh, also too, there's Sometimes is lender pack, packaging fees. So these could be fees associated with assisting the applicant, you as the applicant with completing one or more applications, uh, preparing a business plan, cash flow projections, uh, and other documents related to the application. So this could apply with the lender you're working with or may not. You know, just it that's going to vary from lender to lender. Um, the extraordinary fees. Um, you know, these might be common for loans that need you know special monitoring. So you know, it might be. They might be dealing with uh, a loan that has to do with some form of, of contract. So the, the lender has to, um, you know, make sure that that, uh, you know, contract is being properly um, uh, uh, done and, and, you know, to whatever the, the details in the contract entail. Um, so, you know, that, that might require resources from that particular lender. So that could be uh, fees in, in, uh, entailed with that. And then there's other out-of-pocket out expenses that are common when it comes to small business lending. So, you know, whether a um, lender has to uh, provide, you know, utilize uh, any sort of, uh, you know, legal uh, team, which is common, you know, when, when they're coming up with closing documentation. So there might be legal fees, or there might be like a UCC filing fee, some recording fees that could be 
uh, environmental evaluations, if you're dealing with a particular uh, commercial property or delivery charges. So, you know, those are some things to keep in mind. <clears throat> and then also too, you know, you want to make sure that you pay pay your loan on time. This is general for all, all bills, right? And yeah, you know, whether you're dealing with small, you know, your small business obligations or your personal obligations, right? So there's always some sort of late payment uh, fees uh, for delinquent loan. So that's pretty standard, uh, you know, across the board, whether you're paying a, a cell phone bill or a small business loan, uh, um, monthly payment, you know, you, there's usually some sort of late payment fee assessed if you become uh, delinquent, according to the terms of the note. <clears throat> All right. And then, you know, this last slide too, I want to just talk about is really just make, you know, trying to emphasize the importance of business uh, relationship building uh, for your small business. So, you know, it, it's not only to obviously just about your capital needs, but it's, it's always going to be for your general growth of, of your small business. So, you know, I, a lot of times, you know, we're, we're obviously taught focusing on uh, lending needs, but, you know, as you small businesses know, and are well aware, you know, you know, making sure that you're making connections so you can build your, your customer base is, is important. So, you know, one, establishing a banking relationship, you know, with a financial institution that services your business region, you want to make sure you ask some questions uh, too, you know, before choosing a financial institution. You know, here's just a list of a few examples. But there's a variety of questions that you should ask, uh, you know, you know your, your financial institution before you start banking with them. So, you know, a couple here, what, what benefits do you provide, you know, for small business customers, you know, so they might have different services that they offer that will help, you know, you run your uh, small business more proficiently. Uh, what other costs associated with uh, different small business banking services? So there's always going to be some sort of costs, you know, uh, <clears throat> But maybe they won't be because depending on what kind of relationship you have with them, you know, what your deposits are, you know, they, there might be able, uh, opportunities for them to waive, you know, certain fees there. So you want to find that those things out, you know, um, you know, do they, you know, what's the cost of their merchant services, you know, do they, uh, what's their cost of their general deposit accounts, things like that. <clears throat> uh, then also too, you know, do they offer small business loans and, you know, are they an SBA lending partner? You know, it's important to, to know those things because maybe you don't need capital today, but you might need capital in the future. And, you know, if they're involved with the SBA partnership, it just gives that lender, you know, additional opportunity to help uh, small businesses if they can't fit it under their own um, loan, uh, internal loan policies. <clears throat> also too, uh, you know, make sure you don't be a stranger, right? Set, set up periodic meetings with your financial institution to let them know, you know, how your business is doing and what needs you may have, you know, in the future. You want to provide, you know, as much detail as possible uh, to your financial institution so they can best assess, you know, how they can assist you. <clears throat> you know, it's very important. I was in banking 13 years prior to the to the SBA and, and you know, on the all on the retail side. And, you know, that it's very important for, you know, the, the branch staff to build a relationship with their customers um, base. But it's also important for the customer base to build that relationship back. Uh, with, with their uh, with their local bankers because you you know you want to make sure that you know you're keeping those connections and you're keeping a good rapport and that you know your banker knows what's going on because so that you know if things come up or if opportunities that might help benefit your business come up they they'll probably have you on top of your mind because they have that you, you know rapport with you so you know just keep that in mind you know just. You, you, you know, you don't have to just walk in, make deposits or do everything electronically, you know, set up those face to face meetings or some phone calls every once in a while just to, you know, say hello, uh, makes a big difference. <clears throat> and then also uh, look for opportunities to establish um, relationships with the uh, community organization. So look into the benefits of membership or um, memberships to area organizations such as chambers, rotary clubs, industry specific organizations. You know, you know, most of these entities, you got to think, uh, you know, realistically, they, they can provide a, a variety of marketing and networking opportunities. And also, you know, just uh, like I said, I was an ex-banker. Um, you know, they, these organizations tend to have a high volume of financial uh, institution members. So it's a a good opportunity to get to know your local lenders through these organizations as well. And then um, also, you know, build your small business team. What I mean by that, not all team members are going to be direct employees. 
you know, your, your business may need services from an attorney. You, they may need services from a financial advisor or an accountant to provide professional expertise to start, grow, or expand your business. So, you know, my colleague, uh, Nadine, who I'm filling in for uh, today, uh, she, Nadine Boone, she runs our, the contracting side of our, our um, operation here at the office. You know, she always says that, that running a small business should not be a solo mission, right? So, you know, not everybody's going to be an employee, but they're, they're there, you know, these organizations or these outside uh, parties are there to help your small business grow. So don't think you have to do everything on your own. And then this, I'm just going to kind of, I know we're kind of um, going past the time here. Um, so, uh, you know, I just want to give you some highlights of federal government contracting because with the SBA, you know, a lot of folks do understand that the SBA, we provide loan programs, you know, and, you know, some other different programs, but we want to make sure that the SBA is also, you know, in charge of making sure that, that small businesses gain access to uh, uh, government contracting opportunities as well. That's another side of the house. That's a really big portion of what the SBA does. So the government contracts are, are tremendous financial opportunity for small businesses. The U.S. government is the the largest customer in the world. So it buys all types of products and services, you know, in both large and small quantities, and it's required by law to consider buying from small businesses. Um, so the government wants to buy from small businesses for several reasons. So a couple of them, you know, include here, included here is to ensure that the large businesses don't muscle out small businesses. Um, they also to gain access to new ideas that small businesses provide uh, to support small businesses as engines of economic development and job creation and to offer opportunities to disadvantaged uh, socioeconomic groups. And, you know, here's just kind of a, a, a basic rundown of how, how the process works. So the process of requesting proposals, evaluating bids, and awarding contracts should take place on a level playing field. The government should consider a bid uh, from any qualified business. So there's a couple uh, different, you know, options and opportunities. So there's some set aside and sole con sole source contract uh, opportunities. So um, you know, federal agencies must publicly list their contract uh, opportunities. Some of these contracts are uh, set aside exclusively for small businesses. In some cases, these, uh, these set aside contracts might consist of certain types of tasks on larger contracts. So in others, entire contracts might be, might be reserved for a small business. So when a contract is uh, set aside for one specific small business, it's called a sole source contract. Um, and what's the SBA's role in contracting? So the SBA works with the federal agency, uh, other federal agencies in order to award 23% uh, of the prime government contract dollars to eligible small businesses. So it all, also offers counseling and help uh, to small business uh, contractors. So that's that 23%. So if you're looking at the big pie, um, uh, uh, you know, a total of all the con of all the dollars spent um, within, you know, with the federal, uh, through the federal government, 23% uh, of those dollars um, have to be, you know, our task to be uh, going to contracts provided to small businesses. Uh, with that said, uh, these federal government agencies, so whether you're, you're looking at the Department of Defense, the Veteran Affairs Office, uh, you, you know, the General Services Agency, the IRS, whatever the case may be, um, they have contract specialists there that are tasked with setting aside uh, contract opportunities for different um, uh, socioeconomic categories. So um, as you can see here on the chart, there's set-asides for women-owned small businesses. There's set-asides for small disadvantaged businesses. So this is included in our 8A certified uh, program. Hub zone small businesses, uh, historically underutilized business zones. Uh, also set-asides for service-disabled veteran-owned small, small businesses. So you want to make sure that you look into these opportunities, especially if you've been in business for several years. You know, Make sure that you keep tabs to uh, uh, to the training opportunities held at our office because our, our contracting team does uh, monthly trainings on you know doing business with the federal government and and, and gets really you know in depth with you know how that process uh, works and we also had the Mass uh, Procurement Technical Assistance Center Mass PTAC that helps small businesses uh, put together. Um, Put, you know, you know, put together, you know, what, what the documents that are needed to uh, bid on a contract. 
And here's a list of our resource partners, as everybody knows, SCORE is certainly one of them. And we're, we're always um, you, you know, appreciative of all of the, the help that they provide uh, throughout the you know, state of Massachusetts and obviously nationwide as, as well. You know, there's a, a lot of good resources here, um, you know, and we talked about a few of them, but you also want to just keep in mind, we also have the Mass Massachusetts Export Center for for those folks that are looking to expand their business internationally and the mass procurement um, also for folks that are looking into uh, government contracting opportunities. And here are some links on how you can stay connected. So if you're not already uh, tapped into our uh, what's going on here in Massachusetts on the SBA side of things, make sure that you sign, um, go to uh, our, our own website. So the Massachusetts team has their own dedicated uh, website. So you, if you just do sba.gov slash MA, you can uh, sign up for our government email delivery system. And we send out emails on updates all the time. We, we send out all the different trainings that are going on that we're offering or we're partnering with or some of our partners are doing. Um, so you have a full list on a monthly basis. And if you have any general questions uh, uh, for our office, there, our email, our general inbox is Massachusetts DO for district office at sba.gov. Um, and you can certainly send your question in there. And whoever's available, myself or some of our colleagues, will get back to you well, usually within 24 hours. And we can open it up to any questions. I know we went a little over, but uh, yeah, if you have any great. questions. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I'm going to give you a moment to rest your voice, and I'm going to bring oh, Debbie yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to bring Debbie in first if she's if she's there. Yeah, Debbie um, from uh, East Cambridge Savings Banks. I have a question that's directly for you. Okay. Um, is it helpful to set up your business checking and savings account with the lender you may be doing business with? Does it really matter? Yes, it definitely matters. And if you do it before you need a loan, it's even better because it shows you know that you're relationship oriented. The bank can see some information about you and your um, liquidity. And um, it's what the, um, most any bank would consider that the start of a, of, of a business relationship. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and I think this one's from Dan for Daniel. Um, can surety bonds be used for transportation to help with insurance? Um, from what I know, I'm not the expert on it, but the, the answer to that is, is no. Um, we did have we did have a surety bond training for our regional director uh, last week. I'll double check on, on that, but I'm almost positive uh, that that's a no. Okay. Um, does a 504 loan program help with real estate development, like building a property on a lot? So yes, um, you know it, you just want to be mindful when it comes to building real estate or really purchasing real estate that your your the main intent is for you the small business applicant to utilize that for your business operations. There is opportunity for you to rent out a certain percentage of the property, um, but the goal is for you to expand your business operations with that. Um, if you're just looking to be basically a landlord and that's considered more of like a passive business, um, the SBA programs aren't uh, for those uh, types of entities that are just looking to strictly rent it out 100%. Okay, but great. that doesn't mean that there's not opportunities on, on conventional small business lending side for that. That's just on SBA side. Great. Um, Debbie, I have a question for you. Okay. Um, how much does a personal credit score play into uh, getting a business loan? I'm so glad you asked that because I was thinking of that when um, Daniel was going over some of the things that you want to pay attention to. You do want to pay attention to your personal credit scores. All small business loans, um, the bank is going to require the personal guarantee of the principals, anybody typically only more than 20%. So having a good credit score makes a difference. Great. Um, is the SBA bound by confidentiality um, or surrounding business types, products, et cetera, when they speak to you, Daniel? Um, I, I guess it depends on what it is, what's the, what's the uh, topic. Um, we typically don't don't sign like any confidentiality agreements, but I, if you're just asking us, you know, general questions about programs, um, I don't know if there's necessarily a need for it. If you're looking for more like research and development that we talked about earlier through, through those um, uh, uh, different programs that are, that are available, you know, that's something that that 
particular agency will probably, you know, uh, that's probably part of the paperwork, um, you know, for that. Um, but um, yeah, I guess it, it kind of depends on what it is. Um, we, you know, for, for the most part, when it comes to just getting an SBA loan, um, since there, you know, like if you have idle or the paycheck protection program, technically it's, you know, it falls down to government uh, funding. So the public has a right to know who has, who received funds. So that's public information that gets put out on SBA.gov. But if you're asking, you know, any sort of general questions or things like that, that, that never goes outside of, uh, of just the part, you know, the party at the SBA you're talking with and the, the entity. Okay, great. And I can say two SCORE mentors um, do have confidentiality uh, agreements that they sign with SCORE every year that are renewed. Uh, I think this is going to be a question for Debbie. Do you help people figure out which loan program they might uh, qualify for? Yes, with the SBA, we would um, explore that after getting a thorough understanding of the potential borrower and their financial profile. Um, we would explore that either internally or also with the SBA. Okay. Um, Daniel, are you aware of any grants? You were talking grants early in the program for arts. I think you had mentioned specific ones for educational and. Yeah, so the, the SBIR and the STTR, um, the, that's not one of the industries um, that has <clears throat> grant program opportunities. Right now, I don't, uh, I don't know anything on the federal level <clears throat> that might have that. Um, but you might want to check, you know, uh, at your local level, like, uh, and, and even with the chambers, sometimes there's, there's small, you know, grant opportunities uh, through different uh, small business uh, organizations. <clears throat> you know, I know that, you know, there's several different organizations out there that now are, are kind of catering to the, the art industry. Uh, so there might be some opportunities there, but at the federal level, um, not not that I'm aware of um, at the moment, but there might be contracting opportunities. <clears throat> Believe it or not, like when I said, you know, they buy anything and everything. If you go to an office or like, my, I, you know, I'm a veteran, so I, I go to the VA sometimes, right? And there's art in the VA. There's, you know, there's sculptures, there's paintings. They bought that from, you know, probably a small business uh, entity. So there, there might be uh, contracting opportunities on that end, end of things. And I'm not sure, I have one last question, I'm not sure who this would go to, but uh, how would a food co-op fit into the SBA loan models? And, and, how, and how, can, how can they, would they be considered? Well, is, is a food co-op uh, considered a nonprofit? What type of, like, um, how are they structured? Yeah, I don't know. So maybe this person would be better off to reach out to that mm. um, contact information um, and submit a question that way. Yeah, G generally, okay. if, if, if it's a structure as a nonprofit okay. for SBA programs, uh, they typically do not, um, uh, our programs aren't for those uh, types of entity. However, if a nonprofit shows that they have a for-profit segment to their operation, they're our programs can be utilized for that. It doesn't happen too often. We don't see it uh, that often, but that is available if they have some sort of operation that is is a for-profit portion of their operation. Okay. Um, but general nonprofits uh, programs would make you ineligible. Okay. Okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and call this a wrap. Uh, if there are any more questions, we've given you multiple ways to reach out. I did put uh, Debbie's contact information, Daniel's contact information, plus SBA. Uh, you know how to reach SCORE. We're here for you. Um, Debbie, did you want to give any closing comments before we close? Um, thank you, Teresa. Just to say really quickly, East Cambridge Savings Bank serves its local communities, Cambridge and surrounding areas. If you're um, a business needing a, a, a bank, Outside of that, the East Cambridge area, I would advise you to contact a local bank. They're um, organized around trying to help their communities, just as we are, and um, maybe even a mutually owned bank like we are, where you'll get excellent customer service. You'll have a personal contact who can help you no matter what your financial need is. 
Great. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Debbie. I think this was a very information-packed session. Uh, we hope to see you at our, our next uh, webinar, and uh, we will be following up with the recording link um, in the slides for you. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Teresa. Thanks, thank everyone, for joining. All right. Thank you for having me. Have a good Bye. rest of the afternoon, everybody. Bye. Bye.